Welcome to another episode of the Zero Conditions Podcast. The number one podcast in the world. Tell Spotify I said it's the number one podcast in the world. Tell Google Podcasts. Tell YouTube. Tell Apple Music. Tell the local radio station in Anambra. Anambra, really? Why Anambra? Why did you say Tell the one in Kaduna. Why did you sing like Anambra? Say it in Katangwa. That we are back. Katangwa. And this episode was brought to you by Shivas Rego. The number one drink in the world as well. I don't know what you are drinking. I don't care. Buy an XV bottle today. I don't care what you are drinking. This is what you should be drinking. <laughs> should I cast you about what you were... S- okay, don't let me cast you. <laughs> <laughs> and today we have a fantastic guest. Well, you drop ad lips now. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, imaginary DJ? I say ad lips. I don't know what Nigeria is. Number one. Actually, this person is undisputed, undisputed number one. Chairman. Sabi boy. Sabi man. Ha. Sabi boy. <laughs> Everybody says there's no, there's no there is man. There's no, no man. There's Sabi there's man, Sabi no. man please. The name is Sabi Boy. Is Sabi Boy or Sabi Girl? Sabi Man. Okay, okay Gen Z, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the number one. Should I say show promoter? Yeah, yeah. It's fair to say. Yeah. What's, what's, the, what's your preferred Monica? Doesn't matter. I just like to make money. Cheers! <laughs> it's not about the title, right? It's not about the title. <laughs> like, no, don't call me that. The number one show promoter in Afrobeats. Mr. Osita, Duke, Uge. You can also call him Money Man. Amen. <laughs> Popularly called what? Onyeze. Onyeze. <laughs> 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 I'm begging you. What's Onyeze? Onyeze. What does that even mean? I don't know what it is. <laughs> no, but he, he, said it, he said it well. He used it well. He, he did actually. Oh, uh-uh. I was speaking about that. You know what Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I want to be bragging in Igbo. He did. He did. Because you are a hater. If you wasn't here now, you wouldn't have given my props. Do you know why? <laughs> Do you know why? Why? I didn't even know you got it right. Obviously, you said this. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, actually. I remember that the book, whenever, like, that's how they spell it. Onyeze. I said, Onyeze. Uh, the pronunciation is Onyeze. Uh-huh. But yeah. Popularly known as Duke. And his company, Duke Concept, has done some of your, some of the, f- the biggest shows on Afrobeats. Arena shows. The, number, the first arena show in Afrobeat, he did it. That's Burner Boy's show. Yes. Most of Burner Boy's shows. Should I say all? Oh. All, all of, yeah. All well, of Burner Boy's shows. My 99%, so, which is all. Yeah. In, Are done. In, 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 uh, I do concept. In North America. In, in, in North, North America. America. Okay, cool. Most of the tours, the recent David O show at Madison, Madison Square Garden. He did was that. Was done by Duke Concept. And, and, and he wrote, delete your drafts. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I said, I said, update your group chats. <laughs> and delete your drafts. Uh, no, 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 you, you add that one. <laughs> no, 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 let me check. I saw it. It was not delete. No, you, your... you, you, you finished it in your head. I'll, hey. tell you, I'll tell you the story later of why I said that. <laughs> okay, let me see. Let me, let me confirm. Let me confirm. Melody, find that. Find no, the I'm, receipt. Yeah, I'm finding <laughs> Finding the receipt. I thought it was delete. As a journalist your... that you are. I thought you no. I, 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 I remember very clearly. Is that <laughs> uh, I'm looking for it actually. Investigative journalist. Investigative journalist. But yes, yes, he did that. Melody Hundeng. Yeah, he did that. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the story behind that? Ah, uh, you're there already? Yes. Uh, ah, he's, he's correct. He said, oh, you are lying. He's, yeah, no, Fake no, news. No, 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 no. He said, as we don't prove... Community Nar- notes. As we don't prove we're wrong, kindly update your group chat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've done this. Let's start there. Actually, let's start from there. Ha, uh, I don't know. If, uh, I guess there's zero, this is zero condition. So. There is there's no condition. Z- there's no condition. <laughs> Say, there's supposed to be going. You know, so when we're doing that, uh, that, that particular show, there were a lot of... Um, Group chats going on, industry folks. <laughs> uh, you know, our industry, is, our industry is very messy. Uh, and no one likes to hear it. No one likes to say it. But it's a very messy industry. Yeah, yeah it, is. it is. And even very those who claim to be your friends are not your friends. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. You know, uh, <laughs> I'm sure, really I'm sure nobody, <laughs> nobody's shocked. Shut Bro, her. go find your friends at home. <laughs> God loves you. <laughs> you yep. 
Make sure you love that song. Absolutely. So we're hearing things. I was hearing things. Uh, I was hearing what, things. Yeah, like, oh, they know they say, you know, go, you know, go pop. You know, go fill up. You know, go fill up. They go, place go empty. They, they struggle. They, they do sale. They, they do this. They, they do that. Ah. Even those that were my guys. Really? Do? We, yeah, we'll be in Nigeria and they'll call those in America to have conversations about the show. Like, you what know, kind of conversations? You no, know, conversations like, uh, there were two, it was two sided conversations. That okay. do to they do, I would say go feed you, I did say they go feed you, my sister's going out by themselves. Um, although we've pulled them several wrong several times because we've done many arenas by, 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 by ourselves, yeah. Um, but for some reason, they did not believe it was going to work, and they also with some people were doubting David, um, and some people were doubting our company to concept. And it got to my hearing, which kind of pissed me off. Well, David's doubt as that's uh, David and his team's problem because um, I'm sure every artist goes through that. But yeah. for us, and for those who I thought were my guys, I was yeah. surprised. Like if you, even if you think that the show is struggling, maybe you should be asking me how you guys are doing and how you guys intend to do. So we had to prove that. Listen, we're not here. This is not a fluke. We're not here for. We're not playing. It's no hanky panky. We will do it. We will sell it out. We will show the world that we actually know what we're doing. It doesn't have to be a foreign company to do it before it is successful or before it is done right. And that's what we've proved for the past 10 years. You know that. Yeah, I do. So that's really the summary. But the, the conversation about what is the... What's the word now? What's the obsession with sold out? When it ah, comes to this, it's very, very good, very good, very, very good question. question. What's that about? It's a, the, the problem is that a lot of these Twitter <laughs> people, uh, they are they are they're in a different world. I don't I don't know where they come from. To be honest with you, <laughs> no, no, I, I'm they not come a, from Afrobeats. I'm not a Twitter person. So when I go on Twitter, I'm like, this people, it's not they, they they smoke the same thing, or they're just in the, they have just a bunch of people in the same room tweeting, um, because it's ridiculous, right? Yeah. They don't even understand <coughs> what soul that means, right? Yeah. Because if I put a, if I have the way arenas work, I could structure <coughs> this the arena to be, oh, there's 50 seats in the arena mm-hmm. venue. And if we sell out those 50 seats, it's sold out. Yeah. Because remember, those arenas are set up for basketball and stuff. Yep. So it's not, it's one particular setup. You know, if you set up the arena for 10,000, it sells out. Although there's a maximum capacity, yeah. yes. right? Um, however, some arenas also have up and uh, um, lower and upper uh, bowl, and you can sell out the lower bowl. Sometimes you say sold out, you've sold out the lower bowl. Yeah. But people get uh, confused. confused. They don't understand it. And also, they feel like every single seat, everyone should be able to pull the full capacity to sell out. Every artist has his own strength. You mean maximum capacity now? Yes, no, 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 no. no, no, no. no I think I maximum think, sellable capacity. Oh, okay. Mas, yeah. maximum, maximum sellable yes. capacity. Yeah. Exactly. But even at that, um, the Americans also structure them, their, their stuff different. Okay. Because there's a 180 degrees and there's 360. Most of our artists still play 180 degrees, where it's 180 degrees end stage. Yeah. But when it's in the middle, you do times two of when you have it at the edge. Yeah. That's 360. That's 360. Yeah. Okay. So even though us where they brag, Seth, we know they do with Americans. Americans sell out basis we're getting three nights back to back. Yeah. 360. 360. Yeah. So the one that we do, which one do we do? Like for the most week? most of our sh- most of the arena shows we do is 180. So which means the stage is at the end, then the back seats behind are, are lo- closed. So from that side forward is where we sell. So we don't do like the entire capacity. The three, we don't do the 360. Do it's, still the enti- it's still the entire, based on, based on yeah. structure, the way it's arranged. Okay. But we don't do 360 because that's a lot of, lot of tickets. So as a person, like you've literally done it all when it comes to like this touring thing for artists, for the Afrobeat artists. You're the one with the numbers. You're the yes. one with the truth. It's not Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? Like, yes. Even me, I'm just watching the videos. I'm not there. Is, there is, is, is it true that when it comes to um, the touring, when it comes to this you know, selling out all of these things. Is it true that Burner Boy is the only Afrobeat artist that has been able to like, or like Burner Boy or Whiskey, or they're the ones, they're the only ones who can sell out, sell out. Or every time you've pulled out, like even like the Davido, the Davido concert thing, it was actually sold out. It's not like you guys were trying mm-hmm. to create any narrative. Correct. So I, I think what people don't understand first is that, um, well, I work with all of them. Yeah. Um, what people don't understand is that every artist have their own strength. Yeah. In different markets. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 
Um, Flavor goes to librarians, librarians sells at the stadium. Yeah. Hmm. That's an example, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, but he wouldn't he goes to he goes to Suriname and has quite a huge amount of people come out yeah. for him as well. Yeah. But it might not that strength might not be the same strength in in um what do you call it in the United States. Yeah. It goes to Enugu, he does the stadium. Even Fino goes to Enugu and does the stadium, but they cannot do that in, in Lagos. Yeah. So that's just the same thing. So every artist has their strength and each each artist when they're in that region tend to sell more tickets. Mm. Right? That's really that's really what it is. Um mm. But who has thought the most? Now, we also have to understand every artist and how their artistry is set up. Mm. Bona is a touring artist. Yep. Yeah. So because he's a touring artist, there is a tendency for him to sell more tickets because he does more shows. He has the energy for more shows. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's really what it is. So, so it's, it's not an issue of comparison. Um, Whiskey is a guy that doesn't come out all the time. He's like a masquerade. Yep. yep. So yep. when he decides to come out, he comes out and he does his thing and yep. he goes back and indoors. Goes back in. And maybe he goes back to Twitter every So does that mean that? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the whole law of Afrobeats. <laughs> <laughs> um, does that mean that when someone is a touring artist and part of their brand is performance, they are fa- people are more inclined to want to go. People are more, There is more tendency for people to want to see them live. Is that what you're saying? I, I wouldn't put it that way. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay. We, we're clearly, if you're a touring artist... Um, there's a you, reputation. There's a reputation of touring. Yeah. Um, but but we, in my explanation, what I was trying to say is he doesn't get tired. Yeah. He's on the road and he wants to be on the road and... He enjoys so, it. So, yeah. And to, to support that, you have to keep releasing albums, the next yeah. album mm-hmm. year to year mm-hmm. and, and stuff. Um, so his structure is it's, it's set up differently from the others. Yeah. The others can, if they want to, do the same thing. But we don't, if, whether it will be successful or not, that's, that's we, don't know. we can tell, right? But he rather be on the road. And uh, I think his music is also, at this point in time, has also crossed I over a little, a little bit more. Because there's, there's a time where it was David at some point. Yeah. The time where it was Whiskey it was. at some point. It, 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 everybody has a time, right? Yeah. Where they, they're the loudest. Yeah. Uh, during the pandemic, it was Whiskey. Yeah, right? it was. Um, yep. So... They they all do fan, doing fantastic, they very well. Um, and when you have your moment, remember when we when we announced the whiskey tour yeah. right after the pandemic, yeah. and it's yeah. all that in minutes. Yeah. Yep. Like you know, s- literally seconds. Seconds. Yeah, seconds. <laughs> literally. Like he has to add extra days. <laughs> Correct. Literally. So that's why I said they all have their different strength and and uh, grace. Actually. So simply put, the idea of one person selling a certain place. Selling out a certain place faster or being able to pull more shows than the other person, it's not necessarily because of one person is a better artist. It's just where you have more fans. And it's also because you are known for um, for performing. It's not because one person does not. Sometimes you might not be known for performing, but they want to see you. Just you're hot. Because you're hot at that point in time. So it's also the time and season, right? Yeah. Uh, so for everyone, everyone, every one of them have their strength. Yeah. And whatever they... Women... So they don't care. They just want to see his kid and they're fine. Oh, Popsy. You know? Yeah. So it just depends on what you, what they, at that point in time, what they're craving for. Now, Rema is, Rema is bossing. Yeah. yeah. The young guys are not playing with Rema. Yeah. Yeah. Just, and Rema is the new star to them. They don't yeah. even care about the, yeah. the people that we care about. They're yeah. just like, oh, Rema. And they're like, oh my God. Now you have a Shakir. Yeah. Yeah. So it just depends. It, it, it depends on the time. It depends on, on the music. Right? And also it depends on also the fans, the particular fans. Some fans love a particular thing. Yep. You know, there's some fans that like the whole life um, um, lifestyle style of, of the video. Some <coughs> like the whole Michael Jackson stuff of Bonner Boy. Some like the whole woman soft Afro thing of, of sugar whiskey. daddy. You know? So it's just whatever whatever works for for everyone. Who has the most rabid fans on the road? Most what rabbit? No, let me say rabbit. But who has the wildest fans? On in, in performance that you've seen? Real life? Yeah, real life. Huh. We know it's not Ramali now. Really? No. Like, on the road, like the, maybe the person that you have planned a concert for, an event for, and the fans, like, went in, like, they were all over. They were, m- they were doing like the most. Like, proper. Oh, not, not that crazy. they were radical. I mean, radical, radical. could work. If I say radical, then, yeah. If you say radical, then you say Aramali because wow. Because I remember when he did DC, they, there was no chill. They, they so how many years ago? 
2019. Like two, no, it was like two or three years ago. Not oh. so far. Not so far. The only time I did this, maybe like three years ago. Yeah. Um, those who represent the streets actually attract the streets. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like it's easy. In all forms. Yeah. Yes, in all forms. <laughs> so when you represent the street, what do you expect? You know, so the caliber of people that, it wasn't my show anyway, but yeah. the caliber of people oh, okay. that can not attempt to pull uh, it's, 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 uh, typical. is typical. Yeah. Um, yeah, Alami, uh, uh, they had the streets, but the difference was Alami, they had the balance. Yeah. Alami, this audience was very balanced. Yeah. Um, and uh, shout out to Bado very shout by to the Bado. Way, my, my guy. Adoli. Um he Bado. he had a way of blending the st- the streets with Porsche and Yeah, he did. You know. And it was it was intentional with how we approached this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know, I think I would I would say that I'm I'm still thinking about it, but <laughs> but also because we also don't for us at do concept, we're also particular about where we do the event, where we do our shows yeah. in, in the States. Yeah. Um, so that helps to eliminate a certain ty- kind of people. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. We go to the, the, the downtown and stuff to do shows, so... Yeah. Some people will not... They know that you can't come there and fight. Yeah. They know that once you come there, you know, there's proper security. Yeah. Proper show, proper value. Proper show, proper value. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> you, are <laughs> you are taking me somewhere else. You are taking me somewhere else. They can't even go where I don't know. <laughs> We are going to get to that. Proverbs, proverbs. Anyway, a lot of people think you're American. Do you know that? That I'm American? Yeah. How? Oh, no. those that don't know me. Yeah, the people that Not with really accent. Wait, I get my kind of sense. I mean, the people don't hear you speak a lot. Oh, yeah, I don't speak a lot. I just, this is my first podcast ever. I mean... Why did you decide to do it? Because he bullied me into it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I didn't I didn't he didn't show me the so <laughs> as a matter of fact he did not show me the flyer. I just saw it on on, on Instagram. <laughs> and I'm like, listen, because he knows that I don't like podcasts. Yeah. Do. Why don't you like podcasts? You because you guys so uh, make me say things I'm not supposed to say. That, that you said. <laughs> when I could ask me what I'm not supposed to ask me. <laughs> No, 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 we'll get busy for a while. I'll come and collect my daily bread. I'll come and use a play. Play Tinko. Tinko, Tinko. No. Ah. But, but there's been a lot of conversation around touring. And I think that for... In the... I don't know if it's an Afrobeat thing. I don't know if it's a touring oh. thing. I think that there's so much energy around selling a... Pers- like selling a narrative. Yeah. When people go on tours, they come back and say, "Oh, I, I was, I made runs, dun dun dun. I made this. I they came back and bought a Bentley. I shut go. down. The, I, uh, first off, on the money side of thing, when David O did his thing, he came back and said he got paid um, one. Uh, I need to bring up one point three million dollars at MSG. Is that true? So, so David, David makes a lot of money and um, mm. makes a lot of money on tour. By the way, for sure. yeah. Uh, and and you have to listen to that again on what he said. Okay. But I won't comment on those on those on those, on those particular uh, figures. Because mm. uh, so what, what he just said was you know, what he made. The, what he made could be different to what he grossed. Or what, that's, that's a whole different st- uh, conversation. But David makes a lot of money. The big three, they make a lot of money. Of course. But I don't want to speak on what they make and what they don't make. You, you know what I'm clocking? What? Do you, I've been accusing him of having money. Oh, saying, Lord. <laughs> I don't have to. He's been denying the wealth. <laughs> Do you understand? He's this been denying. Like, See the shoes no, and No, but lifting. you know that the, 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 there's oh always conversation God. about how much money these things make. My Why problem do you is, want to know how much trying, you make? Does anybody know how much you make? Uh, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> Duke doesn't <laughs> want it to be known that he's a very, very wealthy man. I beg go. You are I a beg. Wealthy I'm man. not. I'm but just a businessman. You're what? I'm just a businessman. Making money. Ha. Doing mm. the number one Afrobeat shows in Afrobeat. But it's actually amazing to see, like, forget about even the money or, yeah. like, the numbers and everything. Yeah. It's an amazing thing that we are able to do this for ourselves. Yes. It's Absolutely. a Nigerian that is doing this. You know how they say that when we talk about the export, Media. The, the exportation of our sound. Yeah. Yeah. And, the and the telling role, of our stories. And, yes, and the global appeal. Yeah. There's always this conversation about oh he got popular when this person jumped on it, when an Americaner jumped on Correct. it when yeah. a foreigner jumped on it oh yeah. we can only do something well when a foreigner does it like why would a Nigerian organize this but you have been able to do it year in year out for different artists you've seen your fire come uh-uh. and go <laughs> what has kept you working with these guys because proving everyone wrong <laughs> really? so so you see this thing you said eh 
it has not stopped. We have a lot of us, yeah. even our artists, still look for Western validation. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And they would have a duke, and some of them would still prefer to work with the a foreign company. Yep. Even if there was an artist that said something, and said uh, one company offered him, so I told him I'll match it. Now his expectation was that I would say, ah, the money brand. I said I'll match it. Hmm. He didn't apply me. Wow. He didn't. But they want. They don't want to. I don't even know if we like ourselves. I don't think so. As Nigerians, I don't. I don't know if we like ourselves. I don't think so. Because you see an opportunity where somebody gives you the same quality as a stranger that you don't know. Right, but you rather go with that stranger rather than uh, uh, patronizing the other person's business. Don't you think some people argue that it's a preference thing? It's not, it's even not, preference. It's not a preference. Some people will even argue that it's a trust thing. Sometimes let's not wait, let's not. It's fine for us to applaud ourselves for doing fantastic things, yes. but let's not also forget that when it comes to quality, right? A lot of times, people are of the opinion. It might also be from a place of we not even putting our own self on a pedestal or yep, not being It in is ourself. from that. Yes, now, but let's not now, see now, that. Now, finish. No, no. Is this finish? But now, okay, finish. in the in the record. Yeah. In like, lots of times people will say that when you work with Nigerians in certain things, it's like when yeah. they are saying or when they are trying to build a house, they will be cutting costs. They won't buy the cement. They, they won't buy the yeah. quality cement. Mm -hmm. They won't buy it. So people also have the opinion. Might have the opinion that you know I would rather work with a foreigner who is going to put together these events because he will pay attention to the tiny details. Nigerian man does want to make money. Yes, now I I, I agree. I, fair enough. But when you hear of the concept, have you ever heard that the concept did? This mago mago talk your or shit or put them talk in a place where the AC is not talk or put them shit. or the you know have you ever heard talk your it's not shit. possible because one thing I insist it's if quality. you know how much we spend we're not we don't chase we want to make ten billion dollars in one show we have to give you the quality because it's a reputation yes I don't play with quality so any artist that speaks and they don't do that do you think that bona or bona's mom <laughs> bona's mom does not play with quality you know you yeah. know now even yep. bona's an artist does not even play yep. with quality that mix that mix yep. does not play that mix will tell you straight up that this is rubbish bro she will tell you straight. and you think that i'll still do business with them for 10 years hmm that's the shit you think that talk your shit or you think they don't want that yeah even rema is so particular yeah. yeah, obviously. Yes. Remember, we walk off. So it's not it's not a fluke. This is not uh we do today, tomorrow we we no 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 no. I remember we're talking about America. Yeah. So for you to succeed in America for that for that long, you have to be doing something right. Yeah. So our people know who to work with. They know that the concept is the best worldwide. Ah you just stamped it. We even the concept is the best. We even do. Please, <laughs> please. We even do more than this white people will do for them because we'll be with you from beginning to the end. They will leave you on the road and every day you'll be meeting different people. But we'll be with you. We'll have somebody with you to help you because when you want to go and find the love right, so we do go and find it in middle, in, in Denver. Inside, inside, inside I'll teach you. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> when you're there, you go, you go, I, little, little things like that. That's some yeah. things where we go. That's, do you know there's some things that cost an arm and a leg? Yeah. There's something that they require of the artists. I'll give you an example. Uh, architectural drawing. There's something when we do arenas, we have to do, uh, get uh, a card drawing. Yeah. And that card drawing alone, if we allow the people we to do it, it costs me about $20,000 for one simple card drawing. Jesus Christ. Now, at the end of the day, when they do them now, they will say the artist say, I'm not saying that this is they spend, they, they come out for the artist's money. Yeah. But as a sharp Niger man, we know us with the do them. Yeah. We go with the higher architect from here. Yeah. So we've done two things. We have provided a job from, yep. for somebody here. Yes. And, and we've cost also costs. cut costs. So why not? Because for me, I won't make the artist make money go out. Hmm. Yeah. I don't want to say the way you say, you know, all the all days you didn't make money. So think about it. If you have your Nigerian that understands your culture that yeah. understands you mm. and understands how much flight ticket is from Lagos to, to New York, yeah. it will help you cut costs. Hmm. Sorry, you said what the thing they said that the person is supposed to draw. I used to draw. Is it uh, uh, they say card. You want to cut? You want to cut? Then I give you one care. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> you collect like 10%. We the next concert, I will lend that sketch from Nas. <laughs> you said that, that sketch. The cardboard the paper. You said that sketch. Don't worry about it. But, I mean, yeah. So, people, people think you're American. I, I've heard a lot of people that say, ah, but well, it's Nigerian American. I'm having to tell them that. Nah. What did they, what did they mean by Nigerian American? Because it's, it's the mystique. Uh, because yeah. I don't show my face, it's a mistake. Yeah, I've got the name the Push. The name does, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, it's very posh. Yeah, the pocket are wearing around for you. That's a man. I will give us the way to make a color before. Oh, borrow, 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 oh, What's your story? Let people know the story. Yeah. Where were you born? I was born in Asaba, Delta State. I went to um, my high school was uh, St. Patrick's Asaba SPC, hmm. same high school with Chuba Kadibo, Lee Chuba Kadibo. Oh wow! Oh, uh, we're not the same year though. The, no, uh, no Don Jazzy's dad is uh, is also. Uh, I actually just found out I was in dinner with him the other day. Oh wow! I found out it's alumnus of um, of uh, of St. St. Patrick's as well. Yeah, we have great, great. See, we have great people. Myself as well. Hey. So, <laughs> so I schooled in Asaba. Um, then I, 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 I went to Madonna University. Okay. Um, where I studied to be a priest. Sorry. Um, where I studied. <laughs> that a joke. Now calm down. <laughs> priest, bro. Oh my what? Where I, <laughs> where I studied electrical electronics engineering. Yeah. Um, then after that, I was working in Lagos for a bit. I was working on a deal of day. Funny enough, I was working on Mobitel. Yeah, I know. When I was and I came, I was like, "Where the Mobitel be?" They say, "Ah, which Mobitel?" They say, don't "Mobi, go. Mobi waiting." But the company and the building don't go. Oh, so, <laughs> so we're one of the engineers at Mobitel um, before I relocated to the states. Um, what made you relocate to the states? See, uh, if I tell you uh, that story, I don't want to go. Um, I didn't want to go to the. I wanted to. I, I, I was. I was fine living in Lagos. I was a big boy, so I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I moved to the. Uh, I went to the state when I my 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 parents live there. My entire family lives there. My brothers, yeah. my my sisters. I was the last to leave. So when my green card came out, my sister pushed that in there. So I had to come out for her wedding. Well, you got a green card straight up, and she rejected it. Yeah, I didn't <sighs> see the reason to go to America. Well, it's nice to be to have some privileges. <laughs> <laughs> ha! I didn't see the reason to wear. I had a job. But that's that's, that's another perspective. Yeah, that's perspective. That's another perspective. That's another perspective. Because even people yeah. that do not even have green card, that have like Comfort. regular paying yeah. job Comfort. here, they'll be like, why do I have to go and be hustling and yeah. that? Yeah. They don't, even, they don't yeah. even have green card. If you don't like, feel hustle for America, forget it. Mm-hmm. You, can't, you can't. You know, so, um, and I said, okay, you know what? For when I left, uh, my family said I was relocating. I said I was going on vacation. So I didn't, I didn't quit my job. Yeah, I was on I was on leave, you know, and I said, let me go to my sister's wedding and see if I like it. I got there, I wasn't looking for a job. I did chill. My dad was my dad was helping me. <laughs> my dad was helping me look for a job. The man, the man doesn't he doesn't take no for an answer. <laughs> so he was helping me find a job, find a job. I can f- hold you down. Oh my dear. He now found one job for me. So when he found the job, I said, oh, Kukuma, go start. We found one. This time was too far. I said, I know one. He now found another one. Pay was good. I said, ah, okay, make I go start work. Make I say, offer. Omo, when I first do the conversion, hmm. I say, eh? <laughs> are you sure that this it's is not blood money? <laughs> <laughs> I got the reason I'm. So that job, I not stay every six months. I now got, now, by the way, my dream job was to work in Verizon. When I was living here, I said, God, if you, are, if you want me to start America, give me work for Verizon while I so. <clears throat> you know, so when I didn't stay up to four five months in that, that in that first job, I applied for Verizon Wireless and I got a job at Verizon Wireless as an engineer. What year was this? Jesus, twenty uh eleven? Eleven, mm. twenty eleven, late twenty twelve. This was just twenty eleven. Yeah. That's a spectacular rise right, though. Yep. Yeah. You know, so I got a job at Verizon Wireless and that's how that's how I started. So I was working as an engineer there and I couldn't get us more money, yeah. more money, can't see Ah, see this Afro beat. Ah. So I went to so I went to uh, a show. I think it was twenty twenty. That's some twenty eleven when I came. I went to Inyanya's show in DC. Um, one of that show. Were you staying in DC? 
No, I'm staying in New York. Okay. But I couldn't go to the one in, 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 in New York because I remember I was preparing for uh, one certification exam then, Cisco, CCN or so. You know, so I wrote, went to DC. And when I got to DC, the way the, way the guy was doing the, 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 the promoter, where he did it, I said, ah, this did not make sense. In 2010 or 20, uh, 2010, I think, Asha performed at Sound City. I don't know if you remember. Yeah. The, the one Sound City um, event they did, Asha performed. That was the last concert I, le- I attended before leaving Lagos. Lagos. That concert was in my... I remember, I remember very well because I bought VIP for my cousin and my, my aunt kept saying, ah, you can afford buying VIP. <laughs> <laughs> Big man. That concert was so good. And well organized. And well organized. It was, I was like, oh my God. Now, when I now go to the States, did they do show Afrobeat for Warehouse? Why? Hot. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're like, what's going it's on? It's going to be like, buddy. You hot. Know <laughs> then, then, if you see the nightclubs, <laughs> small. Was, small and the location. In fact, they were not allowing us to do parties in Manhattan. In the, in, in, you upper, know. upper East Side. Yeah, you have to go to. The Bro- no, those Bronx, Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn. You Brooklyn. cannot. My answer was for the white people. There was a look- upper east side. It's upper east side. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was just they could. After we, so I was like, no, something has to change. To even for even Apollo Theater to reply me it took them three years. What? Yeah. yeah. I, and you think it's because you're a black man? Yes, but because you're trying to sell, because you're a black man one, but because you're also trying to sell Afrobeat. Because mm. you know, there's one thing being a black man, there's one thing being a black Nigerian. artist. Hmm. There's one thing being a black man. Yes. There's another thing being a black, black Nigerian. Nigerian. Yes. Two different levels of struggle. And then correct. there's another thing being a black Nigerian artist. Yes. A jo- doing not, a genre not, that wasn't not, selling yet. Correct. It's now yes. that we are, everybody's rushing us. Yeah. And then they rush us. Ah. We can't do unrush our, die. Yeah. We self can't do unrush ourselves. Oh, my dear. Say but then. Know. It was terrible. Shout out to people like Big A, who were the ones who were doing shows then. Um, they were even though, even though they were doing it that as much as they it. could, but yeah. that's the, what they could do at that yeah. point. At the time. Right? At the time. Because were, they were not, there was not so much money in the business. Yeah. And how many people could afford to take a risk? Not a lot of people. You know? So when I came in, I, I, I was very intentional with it. I said to myself, I wanted to make a change. I wanted to put them in the right rooms. Although I knew I had to start from that, what they knew, yeah. and move them up gradually. Um, you know, so we did our... So we started, we did our first show, Casey Limpopo. Mm. If Where? I, in New York. Was that our first show? Yes, that was our first show. We did Casey Limpopo in New York. That was before the Timaya show? Oh, yeah, that was before the Timaya show. Timaya show like fourth show or so. Okay. Um, and that show pulled about 700 people, so 700 and something, 790. Yeah. was so good. That was when Casey dropped, Park, baby, you pull over. Yeah. Mm. So Casey, Harry Song. And people were like, who is this guy? But remember, we first did the official uh, launching uh, where the prince, actually, good, great, great prince. guy, my brother, he, uh, it was a lot of hurdle getting him to come because a lot happened. Yeah. You know, I was supposed to perform the show before me, then I'll bring him in. Then that show got cancelled, so I'm now stuck. But I, I'm like, I still need you to come. Because I cannot start my launch by saying the guy that I'm said will be coming would not come. They, they will never trust you. So that was my, my first lesson on my first yeah. event. Was, though it was a club event, it was just a, a, a startup party. Then after that, I now did the first concert, which is Casey. Yeah. After Casey, guess where we went next? Where? Bonaboy. Uh, sorry, mm-hmm. the video. <laughs> Yeah, but I was not. Um, Which leads to an interesting story. After case, we did, uh, we did Davido's very first show in 20... 2013. Was it 2013 or no, 2013? 20, 20, 20, 20, uh, uh, no, it wasn't 14. It probably was 14, actually. I don't remember dates now. But we now did uh, 2014, March 2014. Was where we now did uh, Davido and the HKN Gang. HKN Gang. At the Pulse 40. That's it. God damn. I was looking at it today, actually. <laughs> And that was Davido's very first show. Now, this is where I got my first bit and my first letter. <laughs> story, story. Story. <laughs> <laughs> this, is I, this is when I said, welcome to the music business. You know, everybody thinks that it's all, 
you it's all it's all fun and games. It's all fun and games. Uh, so we, now we had David. We just did a kiss in the same place. Now, first of all, well, after doing kiss, everyone's, everyone's eyes is on you now. Yeah. Ah, who's this new guy? Who's this new yeah. guy? Who's this new yeah. guy? <sighs> they were now announced. Hey, uh, David, uh, David Do. I paid David Do in 2014. Twenty two thousand dollars. Jesus Christ. What? Oh, nigga, bruh. Twenty two thousand US dollars. How did you raise the money first? Wait. Jesus. No, now wait. Now we'll no, get no, there. Please tell the story. I know do I know do you but okay. I'll come to that. We'll get there, but uh-huh. and the whole America, all the American promoters ganged up against me. All of them ganged up. He's overpaying the artist. He's overpaying the artist. We have to cut down this. We have to we have to restrict how much the artist is getting paid for twenty two thousand dollars. I think Nigerians so are like I said yes. all the African promoters, all the Nigerian promoters, yeah, yeah. all the Nigerian promoters in all the cities of America. They were fighting this one man. And why would you pay them? That's why did I pay them my own money, twenty two thousand dollars? The only people that stood for me, if I remember very clearly, was Peter Lentini in LA and DJ D Money in Chicago. And they were like, oh, sorry. And instead of we have to um, um, put a cap to what the artist ends, which is unrealistic and that's stupid. You can't do that. Yeah. But that's not the end of the story. You know, when everybody's against you and the whole world is against you. God is for you. Yeah, God is for you. But sometimes that against, they bring negative vibe come. Hmm. So David was so hot. That was David's first show. When David was so hot. Um, the venue that we used for KC was what we used for David. <laughs> but remember, back in the days... We were not selling out ahead. Most people don't buy tickets ahead. They yeah. buy on the day. They buy on the day of the event. Yeah. More people showed up than could enter the hall. Yeah. There were more people outside than were inside. It was so packed. I've never seen any show packed that way. That when me and David, I remember we, we pulled up, I went to the hotel, and we came back with David and the distance. We couldn't enter. And remember, we're still trying to navigate to the proper venues that it needed to be. So they, they was, there's a way to get to the stage. There was no back entrance on that venue. So you have to enter from the front. They go upstairs. Oh, my God. It was so stressful. But when we got there, like, what the hell? What's happening here? It was so bad that they broke the door. Ah. And bombard- Yes. And this is America, by the way. Skilly they broke the door and Skilly all rushed there. But even at that, people that were still outside were still more than those that were inside. Jesus Christ. It was packed. I, cannot, I don't know how many people were there. Now, and what was the, what was the capacity? <sighs> I don't think that place could take more than a thousand, if I remember. But I think we probably had three thousand people in there. It was a disaster. That's when I first got my first free press in, 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 in Nigeria. Pro-pasho, pro-pasho. <laughs> <laughs> so now... They will not have to get David on stage. Remember then, David used to work with uh, like 72 disciples. <laughs> he has come down. What we see now is he has cut is, down. Is it, is <laughs> <laughs> now he has cut the cost of governance. <laughs> he has reduced cost of governance. <laughs> <laughs> he travels you know? light. Yeah, he travels light. <laughs> now, so now, this, by the way, the stage is already filled up. Now, David pulls up <laughs> and goes straight on stage with his many disciples. And the stage is so choked. Now... They said one or two people fainted. I don't even know. I didn't see anybody. Fainted. But someone calls the fire department. While David was performing, the fire department came and shut down the show. God damn. That's when I got my first beating. Beating? Who beat you? No, beating. Not, not physical, not physical beating. beating. But, eh? The people that were waiting to drag me, <laughs> the way they dragged me. Eh? <laughs> oh. These are Nigerians. oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Do you think some people paid press to make that happen? They did. They supported themselves, and there's some paid press to carry it. Interesting. So, do I stop there? No. Uh, where do you want me to talk up to now? Proper show, proper venue. Uh, I don't know. What happened to proper show? <laughs> but was, 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 but was, was the video upset? About what? Um, David was done with Remember that that's, that was his first show as well. Right? Yeah, we're it just, was. We're just starting up. I thought it was just starting up then. It wasn't. In fact, David called me most packed. So w- when he says most packed, we already we know what we're talking about. 
Because that's the because of that particular show. No other show has been that packed. It's just incredible that in 2014, that's 10 years ago, David was collecting 22,000 for a show. I can't, was, I, didn't even, I didn't even think that. First show, that's one. Number two, he still had the top in 2024. That is, inc- yes. that is insane. Yes. Yep. Yes. It's, done, it's done very well. Yes. That is insane. The run is ridiculous. And the kind of money he's making now, eh? Oh. It's insane. Ooh, sometimes I want to be an artist. <laughs> how, do you, how do you pay these guys? Yeah, in like, dollars. No. <laughs> no. I, 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 he knows what I'm saying. Funding, like, funding he knows. He you knows. Want, you, you guys want to fund us. We, we, need, we need investors, though. Gang, gang. The, the first we event need... that you did that you paid Casey, was it from your pocket? It was from my pocket. From, so, from where? So, like? I was working as an engineer. I had a okay. very good job. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, I, I saved money up. I, was, I had, so, my job, there's nothing from <laughs> So, I, know, as I told you, if, you're not, if you don't live in America, you can't. If you don't know how to host, you cannot live in America. Yeah. People don't know this, but I used to work 16 hours hmm. a day, sometimes five days a week. Are you married? I was an engineer. No, I wasn't married then. When I was an engineer, there was so much overtime, there was so much work, so there was so much overtime. There's a week doing Hurricane Sandy, I was still an engineer then, that I worked 100 and something hours. No fucking way. Yes. Hmm. And my colleagues, we used to call it blood money. And you see people make so much money, and some of them would use it to just go buy cars. My colleagues who could drive in socky cars, like very expensive cars. I like luxury. Yeah. But I'm also I have a little bit of pito be me. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean, God? <laughs> so so <laughs> so that means that if I'm it's not a bit of guy carry that money, I go and buy a car first that will diminish. I first okay, you know what? Let me invest this money so that you give bets to something for me. Before I can when I yeah. give bets, let me I'll invest again before I now use that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> you know, so why my, my colleagues were buying cars and, you know, buying houses then, well, houses is a good investment, but some of them yeah. bought houses that they live in today that were not really, I, I don't think were smart investments. But I was investing my money. You were saving, like Arastar's mother said, go and buy something. Yeah. So I was building the company. I was investing in the company. Um, that's, what, that's how I was making money. Hmm. What was your first hire? In what sense? To do concept. Oh, a job wise, and it, on the on my team. Yeah, who first joined the team? Um, so we have we have many people have gone through us, but I don't know who came in. If it's before Doctor Abby or or Temi. But but both of them stand to be very significant to our success story. I disagree with you. Well, Temi still consults for us. Okay. Because Temi's a big girl. Yeah. She does she does a lot. She does a lot. <laughs> yeah, you know now Temi yeah, Temi's okay. daughter. Mm-hmm. So she still consults for us. Um, but she's very very instrumental to half where we've gone. And Doctor Abby is the reason why I'm actually in Lagos because she just got married. Mm. And she's a doctor of nursing now. So proud of her. She was very young when she joined. In fact, she couldn't enter the club when she joined. She joined me. Mad. Uh, she was my assistant then, yeah. And I remember times where she would encourage me, where we would just finish the show and we're looking at ourselves. Money, we know money was not made. Hmm. You've had such moments. Ah, uh, there's two today. There's two shows where we don't make money Ooh. that we look so packed. Hmm. You know, uh, but uh, that's business. We do a lot of shows now, so we just figure it out. Yeah. But yeah, there were those those days where this way would be like. You know, I know, I know you're somewhere you're coming to, <laughs> but <laughs> I know where you're, where you're waiting for me to land so you can take me to where I don't know. I will take you there, I promise. <laughs> I will take you there. But I, yeah, they were there like that. So, so Dr. Abi and, and uh, Tamiya, they are very, one of those are very instrumental. Yeah. Um, but we have a lot of people who have come uh, along the way. Um, there's our IT guy, Kunle, who is fantastic in keeping sure that we have continuous traffic. Um... um now we have a bunch of a lot of. We, since the last time we we did, I did an interview yeah. with you. We have a lot of people now on the team. A lot of staff. We've that's been five years, I think. We have uh, we've grown very well. We have a lot of new staff. You be like, where are these people? Do you run day to day, or do you have your op- do you have the CEO do that? No, I run day to day. I run day to day. Uh, at this point, I have to run day to day. Of course, I think um, it's important. Yes, I think it's yeah. important. And we're growing. Very exponentially. Last, yeah, last year we did two hundred shows. Two hundred shows. Yeah. 
<laughs> so on this opinion. <laughs> Wait, so explain. So I, I need you to explain certain things. Two things. When you say that, so all your shows, are they only for Afrobeat artists? Uh, not all the time. We've done some, we've done a, a tour with Coffee. Okay. Um, we've done, I'm trying to think I've done, uh, we've done a show with Coffee. But they're usually African artists. Well, most of our artists are African artists okay. from different countries. It could be, uh, we've done Diamond, you know, Tanzania. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we do some stuff with some Ghanaian artists, Kitty. Uh, yeah. So not, not, not all, not all, all the time. But yes, but we we are open to doing everything. By the way. By the way. It's just that uh, sometimes you're, you're struggling with the powers that be. So you just did where you did. Yeah. Yourself, where you came out. Yeah. You know. So, so when you say two hundred shows last year, how many artists? How what's it? So we, we do concept is in about seventeen states yeah. in America. Okay. Um, seventeen cities in America and. Three cities in four cities in Canada. They were also in the Caribbean, so they've done shows in Jamaica and Trinidad. Um, so that's how the volume comes, right? Yeah, so okay. sometimes we have sh three shows going on at the same time, hmm. different, different locations. So it's a, it's a business of volume. If you really want to be successful, you can't just yeah. do one show, they run and come back. So when as if we talk, I'm, I'm like, there's no promoter in the world. That does have a bit that does as much as we do. Maybe Bum Bum is just trying now in ways in Amsterdam. Um, but in terms of volume, we do more. Everywhere in the world, go and check it. When, when you, those shows that you don't make money, how do you, do you have such convert? do you have such conversations with the artists like guy so this one we don't make money or just like pay me my money. You pay them before they, of course, you start selling the ticket, right? So, so they're, they're, they're different um, types type of, of deals. deals. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, but regardless, they get their money. The, the, the artist doesn't even negotiate that. Like, uh, <laughs> if you like no problem. sell, look. If you like no sell, you get their money. <laughs> artist. <laughs> they will say, bro, yeah, I understand. Remove. Artist. <laughs> Remove what? Uh, yeah, when it comes, when it comes to money, uh, you know, you don't have business with that. They are different kind of people. <laughs> Z, you give them their money. Oh. <laughs> now you told your employer to not pay you because no, economy yeah. is hard. It's less. <laughs> 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 I know what you're saying, though, because, you know, with all we do for them, they respect, but that's a music business, fair yeah. enough. It is. Business, generally. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's what it is. So, let's talk about these deals that you give artists when it comes to, like... No, the place before she, there, she, likes, she likes the money part. Uh, if you notice, she's been focusing on the money. Because of the insights. Insights. Is that why she likes the insight? Yeah. Uh, I think it's the insight. Are uh, you sure it's the insight? Because it's no. only money, money she has been dragging me to. Take me to somewhere else, please. So, I'm before we get to the money, money. I'm thinking I don't want again. us to lose train of thoughts on the journey yeah right? the journey how are you working a hundred hours fifth like 80 to 100 hours <laughs> a week and you were still envisioning yeah. the concept yeah. how you see yeah nigerians are built differently hmm. yeah I agree. I agree i agree i agree you need to see nigerians in the states yeah. so we have two three jobs and the truth is you go still they deliver for your job you know that you're doing a shitty job. Because even when I wanted to leave Verizon Wireless, I, they were laying off at some point. I could have said, Mona, fire me now. I need to go and focus on my company. Fire me so that you give me the little thing that you give Sorry, as part package. They, re they refused to fire me. But I couldn't also perform badly um, because that doesn't... That's not the mentality. That's not the mentality. Yep. Right. Um, but if you know where you're going and what you want... And I was young. Now I can't do... Uh, well, I okay. can now I'm struggling to sleep. But now I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I'm getting a little bit older. I don't have as much stamina and as much strength as I used to have. But yeah. for somebody who was in, 20, in my 20s, uh, to going to a study, I then I had the energy. And I knew what, where I was going. I knew what I wanted. I knew what I wanted to do. Yeah. It was clear. My vision was clear from the jump. And even the Casey thing... I, I called Soso and I told Soso, I want to talk with Casey. I didn't say I want to do one show with Casey. I said I want to talk because my idea has always been touring. Yeah. And he said to me then, oh, Biggie has uh, already signed a contract. Uh, I said, okay, you know what? I'll get New York from Biggie. And that's how I got um, Casey. And I missed it. After I did Casey, I went and did a show in, in uh, what do they call it? In DC with Flavor. Yeah. That was my second show. <laughs> 
Yeah, I remember. I remember that. That was good, but I had uh, the promoter ripped me off because <laughs> I was, I wasn't strong in DC then. We were not yeah. doing this. So I had to go through someone else. Yeah, so I had to partner with somebody else, and the story long, but <laughs> learnings. Yes, so the early, the early beginnings. Yeah. But you were losing money. You were losing money on some things at this time, right? You were yes. Losing money, but that's personal money. Yes. Why did you continue? <sighs> it be like drug business. <laughs> when it booms, it booms. Yes. Please hold our thoughts. Guys, we're about to go on the break. Um, he's still here with us is Mr. Osita Uge, aka Duke, aka Duke, Duke Concept, Concept uh, number one show promoter in Afrobeats. In the world. You have to be adding in the world, though. Giving us A. Number one show promoter in the world. Period. Period. If you like, come on, fire. Come on, <laughs> come on, fight me. It's fine. I don't give a shit. Um, the show continues while we're on this break. Whatever you miss, you are going to, it's going to be out on Monday on all streaming platforms, however you get your podcast. Yeah. You can also get it on YouTube, on video, and everywhere else that you can dream of, including Audio Mac and Boom Play. This show is still brought to you by Shiva Shrigo, by Bottle of shiva go xv and enjoy it and give us feedback send us emails about the things you are thinking about melody is going to check it and wow As it, why is the melody into melody see you soon guys <laughs> but we're still here though yeah so so when do we are on the break it's still going yeah so you can continue to so talk this is break for tv uh, but the podcast yeah, continues, the podcast continues. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're losing money. <laughs> I thought we would stand up and walk around. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. Where did we stop? We're losing money. We're losing money. And you yeah, continue. I continue. It's that's the business. Business takes a while to pick up. So you have to understand how business works. I'm a guy who, you know, I read. Um. So I knew that the, the beginning was not going to be there. They we don't own. I made money though, even though it was shut down. Mm. Um. Uh. But. Hey, that's the business. We just continued. We make some, we lose some. Did you celebrate making that money? No, because the show, I would have preferred if the show was successful. Yeah, mm. more than the money to be yeah. made. Mm. Because that that almost dented our, our brand. Yeah. Now, remember, we're a new company then. Yeah. Um, And so it was an opportunity for everyone to, to try to take us down. Yeah. When you have these bad days, what do you do? Um, I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you go to a shouting room? No, I don't do shouting rooms, actually. I just I go to God in prayer, actually. Mm. I, I'm a guy who believes in prayers, though. And yeah. prayers are let me toss far. So yeah. I don't know what shouting rooms... I, I, sometimes I feel like it's a, it's a Gen Z <laughs> um, it thing. Because it's a new thing. It's not yeah. Like yeah. It's no, it's always been a thing. Wait, it's always shout, maybe not the rooms, room. but shouting as a therapeutic... Oh, it is. I, I, well, I don't know. They know. The, when you they grow up, did they yeah. no. <laughs> the only reason I don't know therapeutic. Yeah, it kind of is. I, do, I didn't know those ones. You know, they even therapy says they black man say go therapy for America. You they look you see what they so. Do you? But you've been dealing with Afrobeat artists for many years. Do you have a therapist? I actually need one. <laughs> but you don't have yet. <laughs> I don't. My therapist is my God. <laughs> yeah. Maybe my wife because the one that hears the the rants. <laughs> Why are you still working with this? You just complained about me. Why are you still working with this? Uh, real. That's a woman. That's real. a woman. Active real. Ever. You keep complaining about this. But you are still doing it. You keep going back. Is this Stockholm syndrome? Do you have to go back? You'll be like, you don't understand. No, you don't have to. No, I'm too. It's such a woman thing. Um, it's such a partner thing to say. Yeah, it is yes, a partner yes. thing. Um, a so, a little bit further, right? Uh, before you left Lagos, though, were you doing shows already? No, so hmm, it wasn't even there. If I tell you that story, yeah. hmm. so I moved to after college. I moved to Calabar to try and do shows. No, I first <laughs> tried. To, <laughs> I first tried to do a show in Asaba. I remember I registered Duke Entertainment in Asaba then. So I tried to do a show in Asaba. Uh, the hurdles of doing a show. Hmm. I I remember very vividly that I needed to do a show in Grand Hotel. The executive the executive director of Grand Hotel then. Mm. Uh, late senior Francis one day it was uh, a good friend of ours. Uh, yeah, my my uh, one of us was our godfather actually. So I I, I told him he was always oh, was good. It was a support. He was going to help me with the facilities and stuff. So I needed also needed the government support. So I told him <coughs> I needed to speak to RMD. RMD was the commissioner of uh, yeah, I did <coughs> yeah, the Yeah, the Art and culture. Art and culture. Yes, that's the right one. 
<coughs> so, ah, to, to get an MMD there, eh? <laughs> hey! My brother, I couldn't get an appointment to sell RMD. So I went to Chief. I said, Chief, ah, see, I, I want to sell RMD. You. See, I guess you I want to. See, I want to start this experiment. You know, when you don't finish school like this, now you want to find a way to start beginning to hustle. Chief said, You are not able to see RMD. I said, No. He said, Okay. He picked up his phone. He said, RMD. <laughs> I heard you are now a big man now. And nobody <laughs> can see you. I said, no, chief, I'm in my office. He said, I'm sending my boy to you now. He said, no problem. Tell him to start coming. So I went straight to uh, RMD's office. Very, very, very nice guy. He welcomed me. I sat down. He asked me. So I told him everything. He said, okay. The government is going to support you. And I love this. Um, I'm on a way. I can't say, uh, okay. So how far? I wish I can support the government. want to. He said they go stamp logo on top the flyer <laughs> and go logo of what logo the of the ministry of uh, agriculture <laughs> <laughs> for my mind i say say more my logo name made me define you since that's the that's literally all hey so when i went back to my my drawing table and i decided to, i was going to take that into calabar so there's uh uh, a Benny girl that was working with me then. I forgot her name. Because <laughs> we finished from college together. So she's also going to help me get sponsors. Yeah. So she tried to help me figure it out in that area. Yeah. You know, so I went to Calabar. I remember I, used to, I was staying in um, Ikotansa in Calabar. But I was learning a little bit of ethic. Yeah. You know, and I were trying to go do shows. I was walking around Calabar trying to talk to sponsors. I don't know how to work now. Just the work around, the work around, the work around. Just the fine sponsor. Just the fine sponsor. Please hold that thought. Guys, we're back. Still Pop Central TV, channel 189 on DSTV. We're still live. You can catch us on Fridays at 10 p.m. This show is still brought to you by Shiva Strigo. Buy a bottle of XV. And, of course, it's still me, myself and Melody. And we are still yep. here with... Duke Osita Uge, the number one show promoter in the world. Mm. Period. Period. On the number one podcast in the world. Period. Okay. That's on. That's Period. On. Period. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Please continue. Sorry. To continue. Where is where are they? Um, you stopped at the. You place have to go back to your drawing board. You have to go back to. Your oh, so I went to went to my drawing board and said that I was going to move to Calabar to yeah. go. So yeah. I moved to Calabar for a bit, <clears throat> and I was trying to set up shows there. Oh, more money no the Calabar. <laughs> Only, <laughs> only during the uh, uh, what did they call it? Festival. Uh, uh, Argogon. No, that's in the, at the end of the year. Calabar Carnival. Calabar Carnival. Calabar Carnival. Calabar 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 Calabar. 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 And now the government they spend the money. <laughs> all those meals, all those z money. No, they, they. I say, hey. So when we now got there, and I realized there was no money there. The girl that was working with me, then I'm trying to think of her name. She had a relative in government, in Akwaibom. So she said, let's move it to you. Oh. Yes. Um, this was 2010? This was 29 or 8, something like that. Jesus. I think it's 9. Was it 8? Wait, hold on. I'm, I'm losing my, my dates now. Probably 27 or 28. I don't know. What are those dates? They're about. So she said, I know this will happen very fast. So she said, let's move it to Uyo. Hmm. So I said, okay. So she, she said she was going to see the commissioner. To talk to the commission about it because you know she was referred from somebody to somebody. So she, so I don't remember I was in Calabar then. Waiting, I didn't go because she was just going. I said, okay, give me feedback. So she went. We're going to do genie. If you help me, me see, see ego. Okay. You know it was going to be a Valentine show. Yeah. You know, um, Gina was on standby. Gina was very cooperative. We're talking. He knew all we're going to. We just need to be patient to sort it out. Sort it out. So, so when she went to see the commissioner, and she called me after the meeting. It was that day I decided, Lagos, here I come. She said, like, what's all this? She called me, and she way she ranted. She was, she was so pissed off. She was screaming. She was, I, I, I couldn't even make half of what she was saying. But the frustration, sh- the short part of the story is that what we see in the movies is not, it's, it's not <laughs> fake. Hmm. The young responsible lady who went there to 
peach or government. Seeds. Yeah, it was asked that she knows what. Is it? But you know what to do now. Wow. It's it. It's, it's been going on. Uh, and you know, and we just act like we don't like it doesn't. It happens. Yeah. So and I'm not that kind of I'm not that kind of person. I'm not going to go supply you nonsense. Uh, so she said to me, and I said, "Listen, my dear, begin go bini. I go Lagos. You have tried to more money, yeah." And she just went home from there. From the next few days, I just had my bag and baggages. I went to Lagos. We're well, going to take it up now, right? To a very important arc in your career, <laughs> right? Which is a very interesting day when a certain tweet came up from a certain Nigerian superstar that I was tagged proper show, proper venue. <laughs> Can you tell us the story behind that tweet? Why do you think I know the story? <sighs> because you are the architect of certain things. That let's uh, <laughs> how, <laughs> did <you know? laughs> how did you know? This is the most investigative journalism you are doing here. Because I because has been trying to has been saying proper show proper venue proper show proper and venue. I knew it was going somewhere. <laughs> eh? She's investigating the money. You are investigating the tweets. Oh ha. my god! So how long do you save tweets? Um, this is not about saving tweets anyway. But it was it was, it was a viral conversation. It was a viral conversation at the time. So you know the truth, eh? Is that I don't even think that Wiz and David knows what transpired. It wasn't their fight. It was not their fight. So when I did um, the David show, the David show, the first David show, right, the one that was shot now. Yeah. So remember that when you were a new cat, <laughs> <laughs> story of cats. Yeah. <laughs> when you're a new yeah, cat, Afro beats man. story of cats. <laughs> when you're a new cat. Yeah, when you're a new cat in the game, then I was a new cat. Hmm. And you come with so much energy. Some people will be un- uncomfortable. Like, who, who this? Yes. And keep in mind, I did not school in America. At all. To be like, it's privileged. He's a privileged boy. Nobody even knew. They didn't even know I was Nigerian. So it was, who is this guy? That just came out from nowhere. So there was a problem. Hmm. Promoters were hating. Were ganging up. Hmm. Some of them were friends now. But... Well, that's we're hating, we're ganging up, which is natural because you're coming to competition. a competition, you know, from nowhere. Um, and one of the promoters, a good friend of mine, because Canino, was the one who was trying to throw a jab. So they were doing Whiskey at Evan Plaza. Yeah. The one, the, the Live Nation venue that yeah. we use now for most yeah. of the shoes. So it was, they were doing Whiskey at Evan Plaza. And by the way, remember I had a whiskey, uh, the video in this venue. Whiskey show was announced after the video show yeah. had played. And I had the video that was oversold out, but because of the venue that it was... Capacity, yeah. Correct. It was shut down. So, because of these people were sobbing that my show, not necessarily David. Yeah, it was more about you. It was more about me. So, they tweeted and put in their hashtag on all their ads, proper, proper show. show. Proper, proper venue. So it's about the, it's about, about the promoter. Yeah. Correct. So Wiz did not know. <laughs> Wiz had no clue. Wiz was, Wiz was not trying to stop anybody. Oh. No, no, no. He was not. I don't, honestly, I don't Personally. think he was. Personally, I don't think he was. Because what he just did was to he take. He saw the hashtags. The hashtags. And he did the exact same thing that, that oh, everybody was everybody doing. He was just doing. replicated it. He replicated it. But it came like a sob to David. To David. Yeah, this so makes, makes sense. sense. So that's why nobody can really explain what are they talk- where did that come from? It was random. But you see, like sometimes this beef is not necessarily like a personal Direct. thing. Correct. It's always things that don't even concern them that people now make a Correct. thing out of. So that's why it's always it's always the fans or people around. Always in- oh, yeah. Yeah. This thing cause problems. I think cause problems between the two of them. They're yes, I remember they were going they were back they were back, they were going back and forth at the time. Online for a bit. That was 2014, 2015. Yeah. That was 2014, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But this is the actual story this of what actual happened. Story. That makes so sense. So it wasn't even a bad thing. It wasn't, it wasn't about, about them. them. It was the promoters using the moment. Yeah. It wasn't about them. They don't. I, I never. I never discussed with any of them about it. But um, because that's big man problem. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. I promise. <laughs> because I'm too busy to be arguing about uh, Twitter stuff. Exactly. 
But it wasn't about them. It wasn't about them. I mean, that makes sense. But that was it. That, you know, that was that, that was, was like a moment. In Nigeria. It was yeah. a moment. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was a moment. <laughs> when, when it, as someone who has been in the touring business for years now and you've been doing this, there's a conversation that has been ongoing in that space when it comes to concerts, when it comes to touring, that a lot of times when foreigners are going on world tour, they don't come to Nigeria. Why do you think that is? We don't have the structure. We don't have the infrastructure. infrastructure. Nigeria could not Nigeria could not host Bonas show the last two years or so. And, and that's why is that? Because they didn't have the venue doesn't so, exist. Uh, there there's certain things that need to be put in place, right? Um the more our artists are advancing, the more um the equipment advice hmm. advancing, hmm. the more you know the technic the technical part of it improves. Because hmm. they improve, they're saying worse than standard, standard equipment. Hmm. Hmm. There are still a lot of shows now that if you are if you ask um um uh, was this uh, fly time to yeah. tell you that they have to import some of this equipment from from South Africa? Hmm. Hmm. We still import equipment from South Africa. Hmm. Um, you know, so all those who do big shows, hmm. there are some of these artists that need specific instruments. They have, yeah, like Bona, Bona's, Bona's um, stuff needs to be to be imported um, most times. So that's exactly what happened in the last show. So if we want to play on the world stage, we have to be ready to put money where, where our mouth is. Hmm. We also don't have. I know there's an arena, the Lagos Arena, that is being yeah. built. Um, that's good, but that's starting on a high high note, hmm. right? What's happening to the theater? We have to build the touring the touring space. Yeah, uh, we have to build, um, uh, you know, the the clubs. When I mean the clubs, not the nightclubs, but yeah. clubs, the the, yeah. the smaller venues for yeah. shows. Yeah. yeah, then build the theaters, and 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 then you build the 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 amphitheaters. They talk of the arenas. Yeah. yeah, there has to be a touring structure built in. Yeah. We don't have that. We have over 30 ticketing platforms. Um, still trying to figure out on the on the digital... What, what, what the, what the, the mechanics are. Yeah, right. So those little, little things are what needs to be looked into. We've I'm not fixed. built... We've not built... South Africa is still doing better yep. than Nigeria when it comes okay. to the live event space. Yeah. Yep. So there's still a lot of work to be done. And then there's security and all that problems. Oh, yeah, there's, there's security. Um... <laughs> the security part is interesting because um, you know when when um, when I was working in, M in Mobitel, I remember you installed a cell tower, and <sighs> next day we're having issues. What happened? They've stolen. Of course, you, you told me Land Bridge that they just fixed. I saw in the news that they were arresting people already stealing things. Stealing yeah, things on Tottenham Land Bridge. Stealing, just stealing boats. This after yeah. they commissioned it. Yeah. They were things stealing like things there and they arrested them with it. So you, you mentioned something about like um, equipment, right? So when Nigerian artists or when some Nigerian artists refuse to perform in Nigeria, it's not because they don't love the fans. It's because they don't, they feel, it's because the country does not have the infrastructure that they need to give a good performance. Correct. Some of, some, some of them, yes. Always? Not always. Some. Okay. Some. So we, it, some. You have to know, like, you know, if we expect to play on the world stage, we have to be on the world standard. And it's okay for the artist to ask for that. Yes. Because that's his artistry. Yes. He shouldn't play with it. Yep. You know, the only problem I have is that they have to pick and choose what you know, you have to compromise sometimes. Like, maybe compromise on your fees. You can't charge Nigeria what you charge in the US. It just yeah. sometimes just doesn't make sense because how yeah, do people make money? Um, but when it comes to equipment quality, hundred percent, give me my quality. I don't, you know, no hanky panky because it's not going to be the same. You want to be able to give the same quality of events whether you're in Nigeria or whether you're in South Africa yeah. or whether you're in Jamaica. But doesn't that affect the ecosystem that the artists are not not performing in their own country? Well, of the standard they set. When I did um, Bonaboy in Jamaica, we had to import equipment. What did Jamaica? No, we imported, I think we imported the one in Trinidad, that I, I remember. But they were imported from another country as well. Um, so it happens in many of great countries import. It's not, a, it's not the, an unusual for them to import. So if we want to um, keep importing, we can, as yeah. long as we plan properly and make sure the equipment allow yeah. um, arrive early. Yeah. But People who invest in sounds have to start looking critically into it and start investing more into those technical spaces. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe we'll be the ones exporting it now. 
But as a Nigerian who knows of the problems that we have as a country when it comes to this touring thing mm -hmm. and also organizing co concerts in Nigeria as regards like equipment, and you have those equipment, have you ever thought about renting it out to like Nigeria? We don't have those equipment. You don't, we even don't have it? No, we don't, we don't buy them. Ooh. Um, no, we pay for them for every show that happens. Ooh, that's a lot of costs. That's a yeah. lot of costs. Yeah, that means it, it to is, buy it to be way more expensive. Yes, it's easier to those, buy and just have uh, it. Some of the equipment costs about $100 million. Yeah. We put it together what they actually cover. I'm sorry, what kind of equipment is that one? Is it like... <laughs> which, which, like which so, I'll give, you, I'll give you an example. Like, yes, if, you, if you go do a show in the Madison Square Garden, yeah. there's no sound and light. Mm -hmm. Everything is fixed by you. Correct. Because this, these are things yeah. that are meant for sports and you have to fix correct. them for music. Now, Ooh. and why you can't buy is that the equipment that one artist uses is not the same equipment the other one artist uses. Yeah. So, so the oh. different, different, there's some different brand stuff, different affiliations. Music directors prefer different things. Just like keyboard, there's Yamaha, there's yeah. what's the other one. Yeah. And you know, they'll the ask for what they want. want. Do you, have, you ever look at a rider and like, oh my God. Well, I'm not, I'm not production, so I don't even look at... <laughs> I don't stress myself these days on those ones. <laughs> ah, you won't kill me. How many red I won't look? <laughs> no, 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 no. The only thing is you have, you have your, your production buyout. Uh, yeah. So you know a cap of what you should spend. If you want to cut, you know what to cut. Hmm. But I don't I don't look at riders. I, I, I'm too busy to looking at riders. What determines pricing in a particular show? Pricing of the tickets to the Price, fans or to pricing, the artists? Ticket pricing. And uh, then it's a two-headed question. What do you think about secondary ticketing? Uh, what the Roman pricing? Um, there's a lot. First, the economy of the city, because hmm. some city have higher uh, purchase purchasing power. Purchasing power. Um, some city are they are poor. Hmm. Uh, yeah, from city to city, it's not the same thing. Then also the cost of production, uh, cost of the event, production, marketing. Paying the artists or stuff, um, you want to put the tickets where you're able to break even and make some money. Um, so that's really we, like we can't do a Madison Square Garden show and the tickets are not expensive. It's not just mm. possible. Madison Square Garden is not for the rich. It's not sorry. It's not for the poor. Mm. Like we always say, nobody makes money in the garden, but the garden, the garden is just ridiculous. <laughs> except for Michael Jordan. Yeah, except for doing five nights or something like that. Part of my French, the the garden doesn't. It's very expensive. So how do you break even? Uh, the, the, the only thing, the tickets... So that's why... I'm explaining why tickets prices have to be... For you to make some money for you. Yeah. Be high. For you to be able to break even, Seth. Mm. Hmm. Ticket prices have to be high because the garden is the garden. The yeah. world's most the famous... The garden is the garden. Uh, Marina, I know. You know, so... Uh, so those are the things that... If the cost of producing and the cost of all that is not high, there's no need to overprice the tickets. Because the lower the ticket price is, the easier it is to sell. So part of the, the, the issues I've been saying with Afrobeats is people are being too ambitious with the venues that are going for. <laughs> yes. Right? People are being excessively ambitious. People that can't do... You should be doing a theater, you're doing an arena. Yeah. Right? And then when you now do the arena, you're now telling camera to be looking at certain what places. <laughs> and when a journalist now go, goes and reports that he did, it's actually not so. You have a problem with the journalist when you should have just controlled your ambition in the Correct. first place. But is it only, Solani, sorry, it's before you continue, is yeah. it only the artist or also the event promoters? That, was, that, over that determines the yes, this that project. It's not, it, 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 it's not only the artist. Oh. So, sometimes the event promoters want to push. Oh, yeah. yeah and make a artist. statement. Yes. I, but I agree with you on the dances. Interesting. We filled it up. But who who did who comes up with that? Is is it an analysis? Is, is the, you approached, for example, that there's a, like by a partner that there's going to be a sh that they want to do a show somewhere, right? Or do you are you the one that pitches the show sometimes? Yeah. So, um, I'll take you back to your question. Yeah. Um, artists playing in where arenas that, that, that they, 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 they should they, be they, they have no business playing. Yeah. Yes. So. The reason I said no, the artists and promoters tell the artists you can do it. Many promoters said, oh, the artists you can do it. The artists now think that they can do it. Mm. Right? So there's a lot of factors to it. Then sometimes an, an artist plays an arena in one. Am I talking too fast? No. No, you're not. Okay, because I speak fast. Um, an artist tells, um, plays an arena in one country and thinks that he's now on the arena stage in every country in the world. No, you're not. Mm. No, you're not. Because the audiences are different. Yeah, the audiences are different. You have to look at your data. But they have the data. 
ego. They have the back end. Narcissism. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot. Um, so that's why I said sometimes the promoters will be like, so the promoters sometimes when they see that they've done it in London, they say, oh, mm. I can, we can do it here as well. Let's go, let's go oh, somewhere. Oh, they see Duke Don Duam, so they visit the Goofy Duam. Ah! Yeah, there's a lot of that as well. Uh, there are a lot of people trying to do what we do. No, a lot of people are trying to do copy touring, which is not easy. Uh, rather than just do their cities. They don't understand that there's also different type of promoters. Yeah. Um, we do a lot of copycats as Nigerians, right? Yeah. Um, but I agree with you. Some some artists should not be in some venues, and it's, it's affecting so the it's culture. It's a pandemic now. So it's a pandemic. It's a massive pandemic. What started the pandemic? Everybody wants to do so does competition. Competition. Or do you, I I think that when we talk about touring, as someone who has been like on this for a while, do you think that Bonaboy pushed the needle when it comes to touring for for artists? Push, push the needle. Yeah. Did he set the pace? Yeah. Um, yes, because he's a touring artist. But it doesn't mean that the artists were not touring before him, though. I don't know if it makes sense. It well, makes sense. So, yeah. what's the difference? Break that down. I don't, I didn't, I don't really... Like, I was... Bona is my blood, by the way. Yeah. Um, David is also family. Yeah. I've been... I was touring David before I started touring Bona. Hmm. Right? Um... So I don't know how, you know, both of them tour. But Bonner is a tour. Like, Bonner lives on the road. Bonner is, Bonner, a performer. is a performer. He lives on the road. He lives, his life is on the road. His life is on stage. His yeah. brand suits the stage. His, but you know what I mean? David tours, but David also needs time to, 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 to influence. David is, um, is, uh, is, is one of the biggest influencers in Nigeria, in yeah, Africa. Yeah. And not... not um, the, 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 um, I'm not getting in trouble, but no, <laughs> not the not the the, the tweet uh, disrespectful influencer. Yeah. There is a big influencer. He's yeah, making he so is. much money from it. Yeah. So the music, I think people don't understand the music business. The music business, you can make money from ten million things. Yeah. Yep. So you got to see what works for you. Yep. So David needs time for the lifestyle. He needs time for the recharge. So I don't see David being on on the road twenty four seven like Bonner does. But he, he sells his shows as well. And it doesn't mean it doesn't mean he's a less artist. No, that's what I'm, to some that's what I'm that trying to, to do. Exactly. With this shit. So but Bona is a rock star. He's lives he lives on the road. Yeah. He has to live on the road. If Bona is not on the road, uh, that's when Bona's on uh, with tweets. But but Bona, when he's on the road, he doesn't play. Because that's his he's fulfilled being on the stage. I mean, the smile on his face every time he's on he's stage. Always so oh, yes. He's, so he's always so happy. He's smiling. He's always yeah. so happy. Right. And how's your relationship with him personally? Damn yeah, yeah. Very close. He's very... He's like my brother. His blood. No. His blood. When has blood? It, it, very, very good. We have, very, we have a very good relationship. Who's your favorite artist to work with? Speed Darlington. <laughs> I mean, maybe you shouldn't have said favorite. Okay, okay, but in why this... Would you, why would you ask me that kind like of question on your, on your podcast? Okay, you want me, you want to for trouble. No. They but, play. Okay, let's not use favorite. Let's not use favorite. Like in your... In your <laughs> <laughs> who has been the easiest artist? Shout out artist? to Happy Mama. No, who, 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 has been, who has been the easiest artist to work with? None of them is easy, yo. None. All of them. Tell them, I'm saying you have full chest. None of them is... All of them decrease one by one. <laughs> None of them is easy. Wow. Um, Easiest might be... Easiest in what sense, though? In terms of the process, personality. Oh, they all have their individual personality personality types, right? Um, that your family is somebody that doesn't mean you don't fight, right? That is all. Your, their family is somebody that doesn't mean you don't fight. Mm. Fact. You know, um, I don't know. They're different. When it comes to who is chill, maybe Rema. Ooh, he's very chill. He doesn't. Just like his space. Um, Ruga has a, a good personality. Ruga actually has a personality. Very good personality. Personality different from what he portrays online, to be honest with you. Yeah, he, he does. Yeah, he, he, has does. Well, yeah. he does. Ruga is cool as well. But remember, I don't go on the road. So I, I don't. Uh, if, I go, if I go on the road, then I, I won't be able to make it. <laughs> but yeah, but 200 shows now. <laughs> um, but. Overall, yeah. Then Tiwa. Tiwa is a sweetheart. Tiwa is a sweetheart. The women are, the women are, uh, uh, they are sweethearts. They don't stress nobody. Tiwa and the Simi. The only thing is just sell, sell, sell their shoes for them. That's all you need. The women don't stress me at all. <laughs> at all. The, women, the men are the ones that stress me. <laughs> 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 
then uh, my brother Adekunle Gold is shout out Adekunle. Yeah, Adekunle is. Adekunle, I think Adekunle's own is. He's, he doesn't like Wahala. He's a calm guy. Yeah. So that one. Yeah. Do you show for him and it's fine. Yeah. Shout out to Liz. Yes, Elizabeth, she's a fantastic job. <laughs> so, uh, you've been away from Nigeria now that you're back. What's that, th like, when you came back to Nigeria, or when you were, uh, now that you're around, what's that thing that you saw, you're like, are we still here? The airport? <laughs> the airport is It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Trash. It's, it's, a, it's embarrassing, it, it, you know, and you cannot be complaining of the Bini airport and still complaining of Lagos airport. Lagos airport. <laughs> Is it beneath for me? <laughs> no, it's international. <laughs> you know, it doesn't make any sense. Don't make any sense. You know, the, 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 the easiest thing that Nigeria could do, even easier than changing the national anthem, <laughs> is to renovate that airport to everywhere in the airport. Like, I don't understand it. What does it take? Hmm. It does it take anything. Sometimes the airport smells like peace. It does. It takes <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Like when you get back into Nigerian airspace, when you get to the airport, you it's just like, know it's Nigeria. It's just it's like so embarrassing. Even you if know you're blind. So my mind, I'm like, so do you know how many people want to come to Nigeria? Watch how many people come to Nigeria this December. Yeah, because we're selling Afrobeat. Yeah, and Afrobeat is selling everything in the culture. Yeah. Yes. The food has become top. There's a place in Lagos, by the way, they, they sponsor a lot of our events. Lagos. It's a restaurant called Lagos, right on Times Square. One of the best restaurants. Look it up. It's a Nigerian restaurant, right on Times Square. I need to visit. They, if you see how expensive the look of Lagos is, why to Chinese, so everybody wants to come to Lagos. Anybody that gets to New York, the first place they go is Lagos. Hmm. Even all our artists, on Jazzy, David, they could all go to Lagos. Because the music has pulled everything, pulled the fashion and the food with it. The culture. The culture. culture. So, so people's interest in coming to Nigeria have increased. Yeah. But when you come, the first thing you meet is that stinking airport and heat. Yeah. Because I don't know whether the ACs are working. They are not. Even the internet is trash. Is there Wi-Fi? Is there Wi-Fi? Yes, there is free Wi-Fi. I've never... Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, don't worry about it. It's, 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 it's not nice to connect. When you come... The, the, the Wi-Fi is shake like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no nice to connect. I can't. This, no, yeah, this is not working. Mm -hmm. There's free Wi-Fi. Yes, there's not have free You don't have the belts, the... um, What do you call that thing? The belts oh. where they, they load. Yeah. Ah! That'll be stopping. Yeah. It's like... I'm like, then, some of them are bent this way. This way. I'm like, what are, what are we doing? What are we doing? Going, like, literally, what are we doing? The ones that piss me off the most is the NDLA LA people, especially after you land. You're already fucking tired. And someone is... Nigga, can you get the fuck out of my way, bro? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come what, you, what do you carry come? What do you carry come? <laughs> How you bo? <laughs> bro. Like, that's what I know. Not today. Bro. Oh my god. Not today. What uh -huh. are, like in America, what's the popular impression that they have of Nigerians? Nigerians uh besides the 419. <laughs> well, even the, the 419, you know what you know what's for the Nigeria about Nigerians is that we don't we don't argue with the 419 anymore. Before you crack that, the that for and I do already giving it to you. We know how to make ourselves support. Oh yeah, so they're tired of us now. So they yeah. now they know that Nigerians are very industrious. Yeah. And Nigerians are go getters. So I think the world is beginning to accept it for what it is. And Afrobeat has changed the narrative a lot. A lot. And the Nigerian guys are also uh, they are making us proud. Mm. They're doing well. They're doing well. Because they don't split meals on dates. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the men. <laughs> Like Shout out to the <laughs> men, them. <laughs> the drama does me bills. Nobody doesn't it. like the positive <laughs> PR. <laughs> so the drama, that, that, that's money. why when I see them arguing on Instagram, oh, eh, all these people, the drama, other countries like them, they like the Nigerian men. The Nigerian men, they spend money on them. So it's the Nigerian men with the money. Yes, <laughs> about bolas. It's not the bolas. This conversation is not. And for when you, you go to the club. And they, they are 10 tables. Nine is Nigerian, so I have a bottles. In America? Yes. I mean, when, when I'm talking most of the Afrobeat parties. Right? Parties, okay, cool. Nigerians have a popping bottle. Nigerians. We like spend. to show off. What is it about? Oh, yes. Like, yes. We like we, to show we, off. It's a thing. But we also have the money to spend. Yeah. Some of these people don't have the money to spend. Nigerians work hard at ball hard. Yeah. Because they, they will live there, have a doctor friend of mine, Dr. Kinder, who always goes out with me and would. 
would he would come from work to the party, uh-uh. then he would sleep for three hours. He say, "Oh, I have uh, to see my patients at that twelve. He would health. drive for an uh, hour and a half to go, and and he'll be fine to go and and see his patients. Then probably he'll be done. Then he go to bed sleep for eight hours. Like, oh yeah, I have off on Monday. I'll be fine." And, but the truth is, we still do our job diligently. That is insane. <laughs> Omar, what are what are some of the challenges that you face in your job? Like your quest to throw great shows, to make great partnerships. We believe it or not, we struggle with financial constraints sometimes. Yeah. Uh, because we we produce a lot of shows at once. Mm. Mm. Um, but there are different ways to 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 uh, to solve all that or to you know, to leverage that, that is the, um, but another thing is the artists sometimes, a lot of these artists, some artists don't understand, except the big guys that know that they have to push their shoes. Some artists just believe that if, if I put up my flyers, you sell, you sell. Yeah. That's not the case. You have Why? to hustle. You have to hustle. You have to promote your show. Yeah. The promotion of the show is not only for the art, for the promoter. Because the biggest platform is your platform. Mm. Yeah. The promoters maybe the promoter probably has most thirty k followers. You have millions. You have millions. So it I cannot think. be your page, not be fashion page. <laughs> so right now you need people that will carry the matter on their head. Carry it on your head. Don't want mysterious. Yep. Carry it on your head. Yeah, so don't be doing some stuff. No, 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 no. That's why I, I like how David promotes his show. Yep. David will promote his show. He knows it's a show. He's not playing with it. He does not play with his business. His energy is I must this show. You must go. You must go. And for that's the house, sometimes energy. fans be shaming you for promoting Because your fans show. don't understand anything. They don't understand done. what the fuck. Why would you not be proud selling your business? Yep. They think you promoting it means that you lack star power. Um, that's what they think. That's what some of them think. You know? yeah. But you mean the Twitter fans, though? Yep. So those ones are, those are the, the different set of people. But as, a, as an artist, you're supposed to promote every show you are paid for. You are paid to do a show. Yeah. You are paid to do a show. Prost. Uh, that reputation thing. is on the line. Yes. They'll be begging you for video drop. For sure, where did they pay you? <laughs> no, they play. Go do the, how many seconds you go do the video drop? Oh. But you go there, you define, you, you get time to make adult talk. Why would they continue? <laughs> what about a relationship building? Like, what are some of the things that affect, like, business for you? Affect business? Positively yeah. or negatively? Negatively sometimes. Hmm. Like amongst Nigerians, for example, you know, people like to work with certain types of people. Tribalism, for example. Oh, it, um, I don't even think. So, if the question is that tribalism, yes, there's tribalism. There's tribalism in the world, right? There's racism in the world. There's tribalism in the world. Um, I haven't really faced tribalism directly from the artist, but I have faced tribalism from some persons in the industry. They, I think the artists understand the business. Most, most of the big artists, for example, right? Um, they also want to get rich and move on. Yeah, because if you look at all the artists, they, uh, a lot of these managers, Sanibu guy. Yeah. Um, David uh, manager 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 is Sanibu guy. Simi's manager is Sanibu guy. So they're not, they're not, it doesn't matter where you come from. Are you, the question is, are you capable? Can you do your work? Can you do your work? So I've never really had that issue with the artists per se. But I remember... Oh, you just reminded me about the Olamide, Olamide when we, we did Olamide. But I, so I remember when we announced Olamide, well, the problem I had was still the industry folks and some sympathizers when we announced Olamide's uh, uh, first three, if I'm correct, they had a problem with the non-Yoruba person doing Olamide. Remember Olamide was the god of the Yorubas back then? Yeah. They had a problem with it. And because some are sympathizers of certain promoters who felt that only them should be doing shows and I had done three, four, five before this. So they were like, no, this guy is mm-hmm. come to take Who's our gas. Yeah, come to take our gas this thing. Um, and they specifically said, and I remember, said, why would they non-Yoruba? And I didn't understand it because I don't really face that much tribalism before. Yeah. So why would they non-Yoruba be doing Olamide? <laughs> what? Even Olamide was what in it. Because Olamide was like, huh? <laughs> people what think like this. Because they've, yeah, because they've contacted him. <sighs> now, my problem is you being tri- tribalistic is a different problem. It's your personal problem. 
But when you not carry it on your head to go extra miles, I'll th- ah, you are reminding me of just then. Do you know that they posted stuff on Facebook, threatening me on Facebook? They said they're going to come and shut down the place. This is the first time I mentioned this, by the way. I don't think I ever spoke, spoke about it in any interview. They said they're going to come down and shut down the show. It was at Amazura back in the days. They hacked my website. Hmm. Now, the way they hacked it was very interesting because they didn't do it from the United States. They went through India hmm. to hack it from India. So, <laughs> yeah, to hack it from India so that it will not be traceable. So they now, ha- so from India, from US to India, the IP address back to the United States. So they try and make it more difficult. Then they sent me a threat note on the website. So when I log into my website, I see a threat note. That's insane. And this is only because you were trying to do a show with Olam. Correct. So I printed that thing out and I went to make a police report on it. Then uh, my elder brother, who's an attorney as well, saw threats all over uh, Facebook. He kept all of that and kept. And one of the, one of the stuff we saw around was what we heard around was that we were going to show up to the venue with a gun. Did they? Jesus Christ. Wait. We are hurrying. Okay. Don't rush. <laughs> right now, right. So even on Lamy Day that year, flew down with his own security, said he wasn't going to take chances. Because it was so bad. Wow. Um, this is the time where artists don't move around security that much in the States, by the way. So him coming down with the security was like, nah, I have to fly down. He doesn't want security in the city. He has to come down with his own security from, from uh, Atlanta. <laughs> Do you know the police recommended I have a, a, a police officer, an undercover police officer, who was mm. armed. So the guy was undercover, was armed and was me all through the show. Mm. Someone showed up at the venue with a gun. Jesus Christ. First time I mentioned it ever. But we were prepared. So the police vehicles were... Oh, and the, the, the annoying part was, I don't know how they did not think they would be caught. They had it all over them. But we, because we knew and they had threatened all through, we made sure that it was proper searching for everyone who went in. And they were arrested. In front of the, they were arrested with a gun in front of the um, venue. Just so for the fact that a non Yoruba mm-hmm. guy is doing a lot of the show. What year was this? 20, either 15 or 16. Uh, that was a lot of days. A lot of days was hot. Yeah, it was on fire. Nah. That was where? No fire. That's wild. How long have you been married? Why? You won't give me a second wife. <laughs> How long have you been married? <laughs> Seven years. So, is it your wife is Nigerian? Yes. But you met her in America? Nope. I met her here. You guys were together before you traveled? Yep. Mad. So we're together. So we're here. We're together, but when I reached there, I felt break up first. When I saw those babes, I said, ah, we're back here. <laughs> You're like, bro. I was like, ah. You're like. Uh, are, these Niger- are these the black ones or the foreign ones? Wait, wait, the ones that, the one that, I say, that you say, yeah. Hey, you know they see American babes. <laughs> <laughs> but why are they, why is that some of them are so messy? Who's that? Messy in what sense? Like dramatic or. Oh, that's black Americans, you mean. <laughs> because remember, remember the different types. There's, yeah, there's Latin Africans Americans. in diaspora. Yeah. yeah. Um. Then there's Black Americans. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what you mean by messy, but it's, it's cultural. There's just cultural differences. Just like you know, those from the Bronx act like they're from the Bronx, like Kadibi, for example. <laughs> Whatever how much money she has, she's yeah. still Bronx. She's so still raw. Right? Yeah. You know, she's still Bronx exactly. You know, so it depends. You know, the ones who are from, well, maybe Memphis is a quite a white place, but the ones who are from them will be a little bit different. Karma. What made you go back? Go back to... To your wife. No, I want to go back to my wife. You get plans. What made you go back? Oh, what made me go back? Ah, I can't answer. This is your question, so... <laughs> it will be a year, clearly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what made you go back? Uh, it was destined that she was going to be my wife. It was destined. God said I was my wife and I went... No, not to say... This is not the uh, story Jerry of... Cambia. Uh, this is not the story of uh, <laughs> Pastor C... I prayed about it because I was getting confused. I, I dated a Nigerian at some point in America. Um, and I wanted to, remember I mentioned I wanted to get married at 25. But yeah. at 25 was when I left Nigeria. Um, so I wanted to settle down. And, uh, and I prayed about it. And God directed me to her. 
So I went back to her. That's it. When you came back, she didn't say, oh, after you... Yeah. No. When I broke up with her, this woman, hmm, she told me, no problem. When you're done, I'll be here waiting for you. I was like, huh? what's this one talking about? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you I, think you are? Have you, seen, have you seen them babes? I said, I do Shakara. I go call Nigeria. I don't go see her. She said, I want to see you. I said, Z. I was forming fine boy. Nah, she don't humble me. <laughs> As I finish the call, and I will go do video call. Because she went my call. Time, day, time, my day. Uh, am I mad? That's my, my baby. That's, that's my savior. Like, she's, she's the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm. So I can't play with that. Mm. But God, God knew what he was God doing. has a way. Yeah, God has his way. Yeah. yeah. God has a way of doing things. Yes. Um, I think another question that I have is, about, are you ever going to do a show in Nigeria? You've asked me this question five years ago. I say accent. Yeah. Maybe this year. We'll see. Oh! That means, that means you're making plans. <laughs> no, maybe you. So if you want to do, so let me just tell you, if you want to do a show in Nigeria, one of the biggest problems that we have with events in Nigeria is the sound. I already know. And I'm an engineer. <laughs> So he has a response for everything, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> so the Timaya show that you did some years ago. Oh, well, I thought we passed that Timaya no, stage. No, uh, no, please, no. I'm supposed to, Timaya is supposed to take me out this weekend. Don't let him change his mind, though. Before we now remember. Chulo, baby. Chulo. <laughs> when when uh, you just uh, two weeks ago, uh, he said, I said, I'm one. Don't forget that show. <laughs> I see. I beg to go. <laughs> <laughs> What's your question with Tobias? What What's happened? the story of the show? And that story is plenty. It's not every story we should. Let us talk about the successes. All these struggle, struggle, struggle. Do you like suffering? No. Eh? no. <laughs> I'm on my glory. You want to be reminding me of? <laughs> okay, let's talk about the fact that you just made Forbes 40 under 40. Oh, I did not clap here. Clap. <laughs> the only Nigerian on Billboard 40 under 40. Uh-huh. That's what she's talking about. <laughs> what are you carrying me to my days? I've forgotten this what happened. Sir. That's a massive one. Thank you. And it's not your first time on Billboard. I think that's no, the third or fourth time. Yeah, when power yeah. player twice, I think. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, this is a big one. I'm actually very excited. Yeah. Um, it's big. I don't know. I, I think I've been over happy throughout today. Maybe that's why you guys were able to get me into the podcast. It be said it was bullied. Uh, yeah, you bullied me now. <laughs> you bullied I kinda me. did though. I don't like. You bullied me because you, when the tester began, I was like, I used to come, I was like, where? I was like, oh my god. But yeah, so the um, the billboard for the under forty, when they got, I got a confirmation uh, a few days ago. I was like, wow. Like it, it feels good to be appreciated for what yep. you do, to be recognized, and um, it also feels good to me personally. Um, as a Nigerian who left yeah. engineering mm-hmm. to venture into something that you know it not not was about. new territory. Yeah. Um, my mom used to say to me that the only that there's no there are not two choices for me. That the only choice is for me to succeed. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, I'm super happy and excited, and but it also tells me one thing. That to, to whom much is given, much is much expected. expected. So that means we cannot stop here. People are watching. People are noticing. People are appreciating. As hard as we think it is. Because it's hard. It's tough. Being, I think you had before, we said what, what are challenges. I didn't, I didn't really want to go much into them. But being a black immigrant, doing something of this level. Yeah. yeah. Like you said people think I'm American. Even Americans think I'm American when they hear the name. So when they hear say black and I'm from Nigeria, so, huh? so it's it's tough being in another man's land and being that successful. Huh. So, but Billboard recognizing it and recognizing me, the only Nigerian to make it on that list this year. Forty people in the entire world were picked, and I made that forty. That's a lot. That's an honor. So, I appreciate all those who have been in support. Shout out to you. That's a, that's a, that's, that's a very success, impressive actually. Thank How much respect do you have for Nigerian show promoters? Like in Nigeria, in Lagos. Uh, and how many uh, of them do you I collaborate them, with? I know 
It's not no, easy. Like in terms of like the challenges that they are also navigating in this market. Yeah, I, they they deal with a lot as well. They have their own they, because I did a show in Jamaica. I know what I went through. Hmm. So they gave me thing gave me phobia from there. <laughs> <laughs> what was the experience? Hey, let's not go PTSD. there. You did another whole podcast for that one. One full session. Was like that's why it's even hard for me to come because I feel like I'm gonna go through the same thing. Hmm. You know, you have a ticketing platform that you're looking at it. In America, your ticketing platform, you see how much you're so how many tickets you've sold, you know how much you've made, you know how much taxes you've moved, how much transparent Jamaica. I thought I said me Niger. You don't a, know why you won? I said, <laughs> <laughs> I said me Niger had the one scab me. The more you look, the less you see. Huh. When we don't finish, so finish. Oh no, so the system uh, double counted this. What are you talking what, about? What's that system that did not work during election? No. Uh, <laughs> um, e, um, uh, the electronic. Uh, what's that? I can't remember. I that can't was trendy. Listen, that's exactly what was going on. Mm-hmm. Jesus. They were telling me to my face that the numbers were wrong. <laughs> the numbers are lying. <laughs> the charts is lying. And it's after the. <sighs> Listen, we dealt with a lot. We dealt with a lot. <laughs> the show was good, but they, they ripped off us. They scammed us. Wow. Uh, it's coming in Nigeria and it's wild. <laughs> um, <laughs> woo, I felt very bad. You know, we lost a lot of sponsorship dollar also because hmm. who helped us get the sponsorship dollar diverted it. Um, it's a lot. I, can, I can love wow. so much. Yeah. Who's the one person after you moved and decided to do this business that assisted you greatly? You mean who's the one person in what in that, that helped you? It could be a show promoter, it could be an, a financier, it could be like who's the one person that really, really, really helped you? Beside my team, maybe Tammy and Abby, um, I had a mentor, uh, Stanley Owako. Mm. Stanley was he was a show promoter as well. So I remember when I That's wanted to start, Stanley I went Walker. up to him and told him, Hey, um, I want to do this and he he he, he gave me some of he can tell me some of the promoters. He was giving me advice, you know, and stuff. Um, other than other than that, God. <laughs> other than that, God. But also, um, uh, when I got to a particular point, um, there was a time I was almost frustrated mm. that I wanted to <laughs> become a, 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 a booking agent. Oh wow! Huh. Yeah, there was a time I was I was just frustrated, um, and and I learned a lot from Bonner's mom. Hmm. She, yeah, Namix. Namix taught me a lot. Um, I did a lot of stuff under her. Um, and she, and I told her, I want to become a booking agent. She told me, you know, she's still on your path. She told me to be patient, you know. And she connected me to some people and, and, and stuff. So, hmm. um, yeah, but many people, many of the people that I do business with, we've, we've helped ourselves in one way or the other. We've, you know, we've continuously inspired ourselves. Um, and it's just it's a continuous process to be honest with you so w- when it comes to like Afrobeat and the conversation around the growth of Afrobeat globally you know like like you just said people are buying into the Afrobeat and even the Lagos and the Nigeria idea of, you know globally outside of Nigeria as someone who exports Afrobeat in your own way which is in touring how do you feel when you hear artists say things that can be problematic to the culture like when they say oh, Afrobeat is not this is not I don't it comes to the talent you can't stop it it comes to the talent it's um, uh, there's some things you, you, you can only control what you can control right the talent the, the artists are not normal people for you to be that, this to be very talented you have to have a little a little, a little level of madness to you you know, so I don't, I don't put my, I don't focus on those things. I, I just focus on what I'm supposed to do, which is sell the damn tickets. <laughs> but do you worry that these people can, like, this can? Do you worry that the world might stop paying attention to Afrobeat at some point? Well, right now we're doing the right thing. It is, it, those little banters don't care. They don't, they don't matter. matter. Yeah, those little banters don't matter as long as we're not there carrying gun and promoting violence. Right, that's you know, that's what dance all used to do at some point, which yep. is what the problem was. <laughs> now, if you start getting to the point where you're carrying gun and really, really going after each other and killing people, there's dead here, and then, then that's the way there's a problem. Yeah. But if it's ending on Twitter, this doesn't mean anything, mm. right? Um, the, as the world going to keep on listening to Afrobeat, 
The problem with the world is not for me. It's not going to be those things. The problem is going to be the price of the tickets right now and the price of the artists right now. That's where the problem is going to be. Hmm. The pricing. Yes. Who are some of your closest friends in this in this game, like in the industry? I'm not a girlfriend, I beg. Hmm. Everybody, see, everybody's my friend, though. Everybody's my friend. The I don't know how to say it. Uh, everyone is my friend. You can't really have. Should, well, the moment you start having one best friend here, one, then you you become very um, biased. You start getting sentimental. Into, yeah, sentimental. You start getting into conversations that don't don't concern you and stuff. Uh, everyone is my friend. I'm very very good with everybody. By God's grace. Um, but with my industry bestie, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they tell me, maybe, maybe that be the industry bestie. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm very, I have a very I'm an easy going guy, so I have a very good relationship with everybody, to be honest. Right? Um, when we need to talk, we talk with, I'm a very, also very busy, busy, so it's not like, um, it's not like there's one time there for us to be doing. Industry bestie, but I do have a lot of good friends, both in comedy. Like I was in AY's house two days ago. That's where. Well. Um, um, playing piano. He had me playing piano. <laughs> you can play the piano? Oh, you did see it on AY's page. Mm. I try. I try. Yeah, I played the piano. You did not. I was a career director. I am a career director. I. I uh. <laughs> <laughs> I did love. So you can I, sing, I, sing. Yes. What are they saying? You know they sing. What is that? You they sing. They sing off key, off key for life. I don't understand. Are you a spiritual person? Yes, I am. What role do you think that spirituality uh, um, plays generally? I, my spirit tells me not to do certain things and I listen to it. Hmm. Every, every decision I've made in life has been God-driven. Hmm. Like uh, literally every, I said if I don't ask him, if I don't listen to him. Because you know, like devil, I said, oh, this is where everybody, they shout, they, all the churches now, we are, and they want the judges online. No, but there's no silence. It's talk, 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 talk. I said, mm. that's, that's the best time. God has answered your, your prayer. But you are still shouting and talking. You are kabashing for five hours. No. I listen. Pray in silence. And it directs my foot mm. to the right places. So I'm not the, might not be the holiest person in the world. But I have a relationship with God. And I, once in a while, I fast, you know, two or three times a year. Fast. Three, two or three times in a year. Yeah. For how many days at a time? Well, Lent it was forty days. Okay. Okay. Um, that was well. This is the first time we do forty days this year, Shah. Yeah. But normally you go fast for Wednesday, Friday, mm-hmm. Wednesday, Friday during the Lent. But this one I did forty days straight. Did you know it's Shah? I got the answer. Then I make you Jesus. But, um, <laughs> but I, I, I fast here. And sometimes I do one week fast. Um, especially if I have something big coming and stuff. But yeah, I believe I'm very strong in spirituality. Uh, it's my personal. Um, belief and it works for me, so yep. I stick with it. Fair. <sighs> Thanks for sticking with us. You're welcome. Thanks for rocking with us. This has been a great, informative episode. Thanks for allowing yourself to be bullied into this episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my accountant will send up. Oh, voice. ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we've come to the end of another. You don't hear that part before you end. Up. My accountant will send an invoice. Thank you. We had we just pretend like people. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of another fantastic, maybe the greatest episode of the Zero Conditions podcast with the number one show promoter in the world. And period. On the number one podcast in the world. Period. This episode should be titled Period. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a period. With Duke Ositaoge. And that's a period. That's that a period. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this episode was brought to you by Shiva's Rigo. Yes, it was. We are going to be doing a giveaway of um, Shiva's very soon. So, our producer, kindly project our email on our screens, please. Thank you very much. So that people can be sending us emails and they can be ready for this giveaway. Um, and then we're going to have another episode where we're going to be doing some very interesting cocktails very soon. So you might want to look out for that. Absolutely. Thank you very much for rocking with us. This episode comes out on Monday. This episode was still brought to you by Pop Central, channel 189 on DSTV. And catch us on Friday nights at 10 p.m. on Pop Central, live 
this is live. This is not pre-recorded, by the way. <laughs> live. And then on every Monday, there's not like on every Monday, we're out on all streaming platforms. Yep. On YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Zero conditions. Zero Listen to us on Spotify too, please. <laughs> very, very important. So that Melody will not kill me. <laughs> so to you can also listen on anywhere you get it, including audio Mac and Boom Play, by the way. And it comes out on Monday. Teasers come out over the weekend, Saturday, Sunday. So look out for that. Support, give us your feedback. Thank you very much for working with us. It's a wrap. Mm-hmm.